Welcome to Chainsaw Dave USA, another instructional video coming at you. My goal today is to teach you how to do a high-end face sculpture. This is my first steps is you can kind of see I have a drawing on there. So whether you use a projector or you freehand or you print something at the print shop, it's irrelevant. The idea is to get a design onto a piece of wood. And then as you see, I like to start with the eyes first. The eyes are really the most prominent feature of any sort of face sculpture. So the goal is to do those first. Um, kind of get them sketched in. I'm using a steel battery saw. It's a two hundred model I think it's a, a 200 models with an extended battery and a quarter pitch chain on a uh, 14 inch bar it's got a sprocket in the end so it's not a specialty carving bar it's just the one that comes on the saw um, after I do my rough sketch in I use um, mostly a chainsaw but you'll watch how I what I do is like stop cuts, which is basically doing lining, where you make a line where you want the uh, subject matter to stop, but then you do a relief cut behind it, basically coming behind the cut with your saw, as you see I'm doing there, to get the, uh, join the two cuts, the first the stop cut, and then you come from the side and come in behind it and you flake off the wood and a relief cut. As I move around the sculpture, I'm sorry if I block it once in a while, but this is the best I can do right now with me trying to film with just a tripod. I've tried using GoPros and I, I haven't had as much luck with that. So what I've got here is um, the first steps on putting in the eyes you see that I tried to push everything back from the furthest points out, which would be the nose. Now, nice thing about using the first opening cut of a log or a log is it's already rounded for a face, which as, um, as a face is already round, so finding something that kind of fits the subject matter is a good way to do it uh, because the, the work is already kind of set up for you. What I like to do is bring out the eyes then bring out the nose and then i bring out the mouth and that kind of gets me set up with where everything should go from there once i see those uh items popping out everything kind of gets built off of that but let's talk tools for a minute so you don't need a chainsaw that is uh, a specialty model like i have you really can use any sort of small chainsaw i have several i have um, different battery powered ones, which you'll see later in the video. I've got a steel. I've got a DeWalt, which I really like. That's a new one that, um, matter of fact, they actually gave to me. And um, then I have an Oregon chainsaw, which Oregon provided to me. That's an excellent saw as well. But they each have different functions, sort of like paint brushes. This is what the one I use for like the tightest details. And it's got the cleanest smoothest cutting. Um, I've got a Makita one that I use that has uh, different tips set on it. It's got a dime tip for the bar and I use quarter pitch chain and it's a 16 inch dime tip and the nice thing is it's the size of a dime with the chain around it, it's actually about the size of a quarter but the bar is the size of a dime that's why they call it a dime tip. You can get those online. A friend of mine sells them, uh, Bob King, Bear Necessities. Dot com. You can look him up. You can order Canon is the brand that I use for those. There's no sprocket in the nose. So those are real good because they're, if you have a sprocket, it preserves the bar, but it does make it a little bit jumpy. So learning how to use that chainsaw bar is the most important thing with sculpting with a chainsaw. If you notice, I'm using the bottom of the radius. I don't use the top of the radius because that's where the kickback zone is but I use the bottom of the radius when I do um, the actual sculpting, when I'm not just cutting, but when I'm sculpting. Also when I'm cutting as well, but mostly when I'm like trying to push in a radius 
like you saw me digging out on the mustache or around the nose. Whenever I do lining, I use the actual edge of it uh, and dive right in. But whenever I try to round things off, if I can't actually just cut it um, round, then I will use the bottom of my bar and kind of press that in. Now let's talk about um, speed. The faster the chain can move, the cleaner your carving is going to be and also the sharper your chain is. So when I sharpen a chain, I knock the back corner off of every uh, cutting tooth and what that does is it makes my radius over the tip a little bit smoother so it doesn't bounce when you're running it um, on a detail area. It's also important that um, when you do that, you don't take too much off because those chains are expensive. So you want to make sure that you take just the right amount off. And I can do a video on that later on how to sharpen a carving chain. Um, but what I like to do is after I get it nice and sharp, I like to hone it with um, basically you can use something that is just like the back of like kind of like a dull file a dull file works great for honing it if you think about like when you sharpen a knife people strop it and that's putting it on leather um well you can do the same effect on a chainsaw chain with something that is just high grade steel that kind of polishes the edge and what that does is it allows it to cut extra clean so um when i do a video of that i'll show you guys but my, my goal is to not only make something that's exciting to watch, but also to do instructional. Like majority of what I want to do is instructional videos. Because when I started carving, I didn't have anybody to show me other than I was very fortunate and got a mentor. But that only lasted like three months. So I learned from him for three months. But there's so much to learn that there's no way that you can learn enough in three months. Um, I basically just got like a crash course into chainsaw carving. So you have all sorts of different parts from sharpening to wood selection to what saws to get, where to spend your money, where not to spend your money, um, what to make, what not to make, and um, where to sell it at. So my hope in this series is to kind of go over all that stuff and to give somebody um, the ability to really be able to not only enjoy chainsaw carving, but to be able to start a business. Um, my background is in, in business finance. That's what I did before I was a chainsaw carver. I worked for a financial institution for about seven years out of college, thought I wanted to be a stockbroker and my goal was to make as much money as I could. And, um, that was my vision was to chase money. Well, that's very unfulfilling and finding the, that I had this God given gift to sculpt. Um, once I was able to chase it and refine it, I became much more fulfilled in all avenues in my life, all areas. So what we are seeing here is, um, you know, just kind of the beginning of an instructional series that I'll do on how to chainsaw carve. My um, Back to the carving, what you see me doing here is, we'll call it washing, using, using the tip to kind of wash away. Um, that's what I was talking about, using the radius of your tip. The, um, the underneath side of the nose of it and that makes it so it doesn't kick and as I'm going over these lips it's sort of like if you look at lips it basically looks like the top lip is the shape of an M and so that makes it really easy to um, to do but the bottom lip is kind of like the shape of like a, I don't know a, a kind of a, a flat oval and so if you can um, put an M on top of an O, kind of like a, a really wide, flat O, you'll get a good shape of lips. But um, the key is to make your features big enough on these faces. A lot of people, they want to make real small eyes, and I'm even guilty of that once in a while. Um, you get too close to it. But if you oversize your eyes, it really gives you a lot more room to work with. And um, and if you're going to do that, you want to match up the lips as well. The noses are all different um, sizes, but really your eyes are what people, what are captivating. A carving like this will fetch me probably, I don't know, $500. And it took me um, about two hours to make. 
and I've edited the video down to about a half an hour. So you're welcome to hang with me and, and get a bunch of new information. Um, so let's talk about the, um, the eyes. So eyes are usually the shape of almonds, but what makes them really cool is the brow. So if you can make the brow, again, sort of like um, brow to brow, again, like the same uh, shape of like an M, you know, where it comes, goes up in the center of the eye and then it dies down on the corner of the brow and then comes back up and then repeats on the opposite eye. Your goal is to get them as symmetrical as possible, but that makes a real aggressive look, which is really kind of like captivating and I guess stoic is the word. And uh, when I used a model to make this, I looked at a picture, I, sh I would say, and, um, and I looked up Stoic sculptures, Stoic Roman sculptures, because that was kind of what I was going for. But at the same time, I don't ever want to like copy anything. I just want to let it become what it, it wants to become. So I try not to fight it too much. Um, your eyes are, your, your face is about five eyes wide. So between your eyes, you want to have the width of one eye between your eyes and your lips, they want to fall off the, the, the corners of your lips want to fall off the center of your eyes. So if you draw a line right down the center of the eye on each side, it should fall right where the corner of the lips are. Um, your eye, face is eight eyes tall, five eyes wide, and um, your nose should fall into about the quarter marker on the eyes and your lips should fall in the halfway marker right in the center of each eye. And then um, these are kind of just old fundamental principles of illustration and, and sculpting that have been used forever. And so I try to employ those. What, um, what's real important in this area that you see me working on is to push back the face far enough without having the eyes being too far uh, forward into your sculpture. And so a lot of times I'll have to sculpt my eyes twice because I kind of sketch them in the first time, get the shapes roughed in, but then after that I try to, um, I'll end up cutting them back and like another layer, like the layer of an onion, kind of pushing it back. A lot of people don't realize, they always say, what do you do if you make a mistake? Well, the truth is um, I just, push back another layer and sometimes that's unfortunate when you have a lot of detail set up so the key is you always want to block things out before you model them and you want to model them like the whole thing and then detail it because if you put too much detail in any one area then chances are you're gonna to have to erase it so what you see me doing here is um, undercutting up under the eyebrow as the the deepest part of the eye falls behind the eyebrow um, and I'm kind of doing the same thing on the lips where I'm just pushing that line in. You can see the M that I made there for the top lip and kind of like that um, big long flat circle on the bottom, big flat oval. Um, I, as I work an area, I make sure to do the detail um, after I've modeled it, but I try to work each area at, in relation to the rest because I don't want to get too far detailed in any one area. So what you see me pulling out here is a belt sander. This is a Makita belt sander. I really like this tool. It um, chainsaws as well as this tool, they kind of fit well together. It's got about the same diameter as my smallest chainsaw bar. And um, it's a lot like a chisel as far as if you put a, a rough grit, I've got, they make 40 grit, they make 80 grit, 120 and, and uh, I want to say 220, um, but at least 120 for sure. But as you can see, I don't just hold it on the handle, I hold it on the motor and it, it, I hold it by that screw or that nut that's on the tip of it. It comes with a handle there, I take the handle off because it gets in the way, but I d still will hold on to that little screw. Um, this is an angle grinder, this is a 13 amp DeWalt. I like it because of that handle on the back is like, um, I don't know how what it, what it's like, but it's it's not bulky. I can grab it sort of like a pistol grip or like a, more like a shotgun really, but it allows me to really roll my wrists and um, 
have control over what I'm doing. Also, you want to make sure that you don't make your subject matter too small for your tool. Make your subjects as wide as the tools you're using. So um, don't get in the trap of trying to make something so small that you can't reach it with anything but a Dremel because that's not how you make money working with Dremels. I mean, yeah, if you want to do a little bit of detail on the eyes or like maybe a little bit on the, the hands on something with a, a Dremel, go for it. But I use a die grinder, an angle grinder, a belt sander, and a chainsaw. Those four tools exclusively um, is enough to get you started. And you can get cheap tools at Harbor Freight. They make an angle grinder, a belt sander, and a die grinder. And those are enough to get you started until you start making a little bit of money. Um, you don't have to buy the more expensive tools at first. Matter of fact, when I started, I didn't have any money. I started my business with a $500 investment into one chainsaw, which was the smallest one steel made, a pair of chaps, safety glasses, and an angle grinder. And that was about all I had um, for my first like six months. And once I've made money off of my practice, then I bought new tools. So you can see this tool right here. That is um, a real aggressive, I don't remember who makes it, but it's a real aggressive cone bit. I think Fordham makes some of those bits. If I'm if I'm remembering correctly, I'll, I'll look for it. And I'll put it in the notes. Um, but that tool is excellent. It's just real aggressive yet you can do fine details with it. You can see me as I do these little hair twirls. Um, I set them up with the chainsaw, but then I uh, angle grind them to smooth them out. And then I use that tool to put the direction of the hair in, to plunge it into the center, and to really pull the hair lines to make a, a flow line around it. As you can see, uh, sort of see, I'm, I'm blocking it right there. but. I'll move out of the way here in a moment where you can see me pulling lines with that. Um, and I'm also shaping and I'm also sculpting with it. And it's just a great overall tool. I use that and I use a dovetail bit. Those are pretty much the primary bits that I use in that die grinder. A die grinder is just like a souped up Dremel. I like the battery powered ones because you don't have a cord to get in the way. But if you need to start with a corded one, by all means, don't let anything stop you. My thing is like, I hate when people say, oh, I don't have what I need to do what I need to do. Like, go make it happen. Just start with what you have. Most of the time, people are just afraid to start. And if you just start with what you have and really try to put an effort into it, the other stuff will come to you. But you can see how I'm pulling those lines, those hair lines, to make a flow line around that little curl. And what I'm trying to do is give it like, kind of like Roman, Esque style curly hair locks that you see in some of the old school Roman sculptures. Um, what I like to do is make sure that my um, my design is sort of fluid in my head, but not. I don't try to stick to it too much because, um, like I said before, I just want to let it become what it needs to become. Because a lot of times it'll surprise you, which you end up making if as long as you go into it with a flexible approach. So you can see I'm pulling those, those long fluid flow lines from the beginning of the curl all the way to the base of it. And then it just really makes it pop. Um, I use that cone bit for the eyes as well. You'll see me uh, put the eyes in. You'll see me use it for the nostrils, for the lips. Um, it's just an excellent tool because it doesn't leave a lot of cleanup. It's, um, they're kind of expensive. I think those bits are like 60 or $80, but they're well worth it. They last forever. That's the only one I've ever uh, had. Actually, I didn't buy that. A friend of mine gave it to me, um, but it's the only one that, uh, that I've ever had, and it was a donated one. So he wore it out pretty good before I got it. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure Fordham is the brand. Um, the eyes... You don't want to make the pupils in the center of the eye. You always want to make it like like half half the circle exposed and the other half behind the lid or like two thirds exposed and a third behind the lid. Uh, you do a circle for the outside of, I guess it'd be the iris. And then you do um, a circle inside around the pupil. And that little, um, that little piece I leave in the middle, that catches light so that it, it kind of gives the eyes 
uh, some some realism and like I said the eyes are the most important part and that's really what this sculpture is it's like two eyes with a bunch of supporting features and um, I mean that's what I'm focusing on is I'm focusing on making those eyes really really um, very kind of realistic but at the same time a caricature uh, what what I like to do is um, sketch them in and then slowly define them because that way you can balance them out left to right. Don't commit too much to any any one part of it because if it's like crooked or unbalanced, it really looks wonky. So um, I'm not saying mine are perfect, but they're balanced enough to, to pass. And this is what I would call like a rough, a rough carving, kind of like a, a sketch. If I was gonna go and refine it, I would typically pull out a chisel and use the chisel to clean up the eyelids and the eyeball and um, the lips would be a little tighter and those curls would be a little tighter but i'm trying to just do this all with what they with like what i call power carving where i'm using power tools to make it all because it's really the most um efficient way to carve when oh let's talk wood so when i uh, select a piece of wood I want to get a piece that is um, still green meaning it hasn't sat out forever but yet um, a little bit dry so this is an opening cut off of some milling I was doing I threw I throw them in a pile so that when I'm ready to sculpt uh, that I have um, blocks for later and then um, I know they're a little bit dry that's that DeWalt saw I was telling you about that's their newest one it pushes a 20 inch bar which I was shocked. I thought it was gonna be, you know, kind of gut, gutless and a joke, but when they gave it to me, I was shocked. It'll actually cut through a 20 inch log. Um, it has enough guts in it to really make quick carving. I think I did a wood spirit the other day with it in about 15 minutes, um, but you see how fast that thing cuts. Um, I definitely think it's worth the money. It's about the same price as that steel saw. We're looking about 700 bucks uh, for battery and saw and charger. Um, well worth it. Um, when I bought my first little gas saw for $700, um, the first time I spent that kind of money, it's it's a two a 200 or a 201 uh, steel, uh, usually meant for limbing for the tree services. But I don't get the top handle; I get the back handle, and it makes. Um, this DeWalt is equivalent to that as far as power and weight and speed. Um, you could put a small bar on that thing and really kick some butt. Uh, the other thing I like about it is the battery will go into my drills. It will go into an angle grinder that I got on order. And um, I'll probably get a, a die grinder too. It's nice to have two of each tool so that you don't have to like, you can have multiple bars, multiple sandpapers, multiple... Um, die grinder bits and not have to stop and change things because the one thing about chainsaw carving or like power carving is it's very like in the moment it stuff you see stuff and by when with hand carving by the time you approach it if you're like kind of like a fluid carver like i am you've forgotten what you were trying to chase and with the chainsaw once i see it i lean into it i create it and it's done and quite often i surprise myself with with how um, how it came out, like ideas that I wouldn't have ever like processed on paper. Um, another thing that people I recommend people to do is to start with um, potato and a pocket knife. That's a great way to get the idea of using one long blade and having kind of like slicing cuts where you take things out in two or three cuts at a time. You can only remove things with like two joining cuts. Or like if you want to make a triangle cutting out of it, a triangle out of the block you know you push in from the left push in from the right and then you push in from underneath and a piece will pop out um, and so using a potato and a pocket knife gives you a real good feel for like chick carving with a chainsaw there's that Oregon saw the thing I like about that saw um, the reason I grabbed it, I think my battery ran out on the other one the reason I like that saw is it's got a self sharpener on it and um, anytime I got to get down by the ground or dig something out of the dirt, I'll use that saw. Also, it has a fair bit of guts to it too. It's got a 40 volt battery and 
uh, Oregon was nice enough to supply me with um, a chain a sharpener and a blower and both of those tools I'll uh, look forward to making videos on I've still been going through chemotherapy so my videos have been real slow um, just trying to work around that but uh, if you haven't seen that you can watch my other video where I uh, where I go over getting a cancer diagnosis and everything else and and uh, I've had some delays on that recently but um, but I'm getting through it you know my hope is that people can see what I'm doing and use this as uh, inspiration to go out and create their own art um, you can see me using that that belt sander using the edge of it to pull lines and also using the round shape of it to push like a, a dent into the wood um, I know I'm blocking the video sorry about that um, spare me the comments please I couldn't figure out a different way to do it for this video I'm just happy to be able to get a video out to be quite honest um, I haven't been able to for gosh almost a month and a half but uh, maybe two months so I'm hoping that the videos come out a little quicker than that um, you can see me using that belt sander to erase my chainsaw marks and at the same time um, push in details Here's that angle grinder again, just kind of tightening up my lines, pulling flow lines, and um, pretty quick here, you'll see me use my torch. A torch is how I get the darkness inside those um, curls and to push in shadow. So um, it's kind of like a forced shadow perspective. So here's the torch, and that's just a basic you know propane torch that you get at your local hardware store um, make sure you don't catch anything on fire but yeah that's basically the video um, in a nutshell is I'm trying to show people what what they an option is for carving I really do appreciate all the love and support that I've been getting and um, just bear with me over this next couple months I have like two more months of, uh, of going through the um, the uh, cancer treatment but once I'm through with that it is in remission so that's a good thing and I am still working and doing everything I need to do but I'm slower on getting videos out so thank you please subscribe Chainsaw Dave USA coming at ya